Uh, let me know if anybody has any trouble hearing me or uh, seeing my slides. Uh, but thank you once again for uh, inviting me to speak today. Um, it's a real honor. Um, and, and thank you in particular to, uh, to Eric Kurzog for, uh, for nudging me along to make sure I got this uh, presentation out to you guys today. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's a long time coming and it's a, uh, it certainly takes a village. Uh, Aaron Gary and Eric Kurzog and a number of other folks who are uh, involved in the DexWig are also involved in, in the OSLC efforts. And uh, it's been a real pleasure to work with them uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, on the screen here, I've uh, listed myself and, and three of the members of my leadership team. Um, I'd like to just give a shout out to them. Tamara Hambrook actually is in the, uh, in the chat right now or in the attendee list uh, right now. She's the uh, co-chair for the DexWig and is leading our digital viewpoint model efforts, uh, a lot of which I will touch on in the brief today. So if you have any questions about the digital viewpoint model, the conceptual ontology that we're developing to help govern the digital engineering information exchange, um, please feel free to reach out to her. Her email address is there. Uh, she's very sharp on, on all of this. And uh, we've got a lot of exciting things that we have in the works right now. Um, but beyond those uh, four names you see there, there is a, a large group that's been uh, working tirelessly to advance this effort. So you might ask, what is this effort? Well. The DexWay is uh, really about um, really about trying to advance the state of the art around digital engineering, particularly focusing on the uh, the tenets of the digital engineering strategy that uh, Philomena Zimmerman, the director of Engineering Tools and Environments, and her team at the uh, U.S. Department of Defense um, put together as a a set of guidance that was provided out to the uh, to the broader community, but mainly targeting the US DOD armed services. Um, the big strategic objective of the DexWig, and it was created as an INCOSI working group um, chartered in that faction, the fashion is to pull together the efforts across academia, across governments, across uh, the industry, and, and try to figure out ways that we can help standardize and drive the adoption of the broader digital engineering strategy, but also support the specific objectives of being able to exchange digital engineering content in a, in a semantically meaningful way. Um, why is this difficult though? You know, uh, when we did a panel session back at the INCOSI International Symposium um, back in July, uh, one of the comments we got um, in the lead up to that panel session uh, as part of the review process for INCOSI was, you know, hasn't this already been figured out? You know, why is this still a problem? And I think it's a problem because, you know, we can exchange digital artifacts. I could create a, a systems modeling language uh, MBSC model in Cameo and provide that model to you. I could maybe even convert it into an XML based format like XMI and provide that to you. And then you could ingest that into your tool of choice. Um, but beyond the infrastructure concern, there is also a, a data analysis concern. What is the content? What is the semantic or conceptual meaning behind the information that's being provided. Um, and honestly, a lot of this are lessons that we've learned all the way back to traditional modeling simulation and analysis. Uh, so I, you know, I've been to APL for eight years at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab. Um, before that, I was at Northrop Grumman in Baltimore and I was in the modeling and sim group. And one of the big you know, issues we always had was how do we stitch together different simulations that may have different you know, fundamental assumptions, architectural or conceptual about the way the world works. So if I send you position data, is that position with respect to the center of the earth, the center of your platform? What kind of coordinate system is it? What are the units of measure? Um, all of that stuff comes into play. That's now compounded now that we have a, a digital engineering ecosystem that consists of not just simulations, but also a series of, 
of digital engineering artifacts, hardware designs in CAD, software designs in UML, uh, whatever they might be, uh, that we're all trying to pull together and, and in some way semantically meaningfully relate to one another. Um, for a single model, as we see here, let's take SysML, for example, um, it's a little easier to try to do the data analysis because you have a single governing meta model that you're working with. Um, an activity in SysML means a certain kind of a thing. A block in SysML means a certain kind of a thing. Although, even in this case, as we'll see in a minute, that doesn't always mean that uh, your data analysis is going to be easy. It just means that it's maybe a little more tractable. But now, once we add in a second type of model, say MATLAB, how do we relate the elements or the concepts in SysML and its meta model to the elements and, and concepts and meta model that's part of MATLAB? Uh, becomes a lot harder. Does a SysML block really relate to a SysML to a MATLAB class? Is a MATLAB function really the same as a SysML activity? And the answer to that, of course, is it depends. It depends on what we're trying to model with that SysML activity or that MATLAB function. And of course, this problem grows exponentially. And I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, talking to a forum of OSLC experts, um, but this problem gets conceptually harder and at an almost exponential rate as we start to see an n square problem uh, arise, as we start to connect a CAD model to a finite element analysis to a MATLAB model, et cetera. Even if we had the same meta model, so going back to the SysML example I had earlier, even if we're just using SysML and, and I was exchanging a SysML model of a car with you and you have a SysML model of a car that you're creating as well, and let's say we want to take the engine out of my car and relate it to the, to the transmission in your car and combine our models somehow, can we even do that? Unfortunately, the answer is maybe not, um, because part of the issue we see here is we've got this concept called a car, and you and I could model that car using the same language, the same meta model in very different ways, um, because we don't have an ontology or a set of concepts that help govern how we're, we're creating that car. So in one case, I might care about the number of cylinders in the engine. In your case, you may not. You're only concerned about the engine size um, because you're maybe calculating mass properties for the car where I don't even care about the mass properties. I'm more concerned about the power that the, that the engine can put out and the number of passengers that it can seat. So those kinds of things um, are, are what is part of the challenge of, of the digital engineering information exchange. It's that kind of data analysis, how we manage and curate and translate and transfer that data from ecosystem to ecosystem. Now, one way to, to handle this across different kinds of meta models is to create some sort of a mapping. So we could say that the concept called car also has a concept related to it called mass and the system O block, the CAD assembly and the MATLAB class, we're going to say that all those things can represent a car and therefore I can relate the CAD assembly to the system O block. Well, that's really only possible if we're certain that those concepts are relatable conceptually across those different kinds of artifacts. And additionally, uh, we're not done yet because even if we solve that problem within our, our organization or within our business unit or engineering team or whatever it is, and we create a digital engineering ecosystem that manages to conceptually relate all those items, all those authoritative sources of truth about the mechanical design in CAD or the, or the SysML physical architecture, et cetera, doesn't mean that we're gonna be able to take that ecosystem uh, or that set of digital artifacts that we've related together out of our ecosystem and provide it to somebody else in a different ecosystem even if they have the same ecosystem as we do. And this brings us to the idea of a digital viewpoint model. So the digital viewpoint model, um, and again, Tamir Hambrick on the line can answer any questions you have about this in detail, but the digital viewpoint model, it's an implementation agnostic, in other, in other words, platform independent conceptual ontology. We're just trying to identify the concepts related to 
digital artifacts, digital views, the digital viewpoints that those digital views conform to, and then use that as a way to be able to describe how various pieces of data are conceptually related in order to provide the content in a digital view that then could be shared with, with another team or with another stakeholder who could then consume that data via that view. So it's, a, it's sort of a high level framework for describing various sources of information, how they fit together in the digital engineering ecosystem so that you can start to then pull essentially digital threads through all of that information to support whatever analysis uh, you, you want to do. It's kind of a cartoon look at this, but the idea is you have a set of digital artifacts, anything from a finite element model to an electrical model, requirements model, whatever else in between. And the digital viewpoint model acts as sort of a, a prism that takes the information from them, those various digital artifacts and synthesizes it into a digital view. Now that digital view could have a variety of different uh, concrete syntaxes, right? It could be a 3D visualization like we see here, it could be a dashboard or a diagram, um, who knows? Um, but the content has been semantically related to one another in some way um, in the back end via how we've structured things in the digital viewpoint model and then the digital view provides a representation of that data. Just as you could have the same data in a handwritten letter as you have in an email, um, but the email has different ways of presenting that view digitally versus the handwritten letter, which only has one digital view, not even a digital view, one view of that data. And the view of that data is the transmission medium, that letter, and the, the handwriting on it is specific to that view and that view alone. There's no other way to view that data other than the piece of paper. So the digital view then gives us a way to get at that content in a variety of ways. I could have that email read to me in a text-to-speech uh, digital view that would be audio-based. I could have that uh, information um, just on my digital, on my screen, on my monitor for me to read. The DVM itself is divided into four ontologies. So it's sort of an ontology of ontologies. And, and I think that's an elegant sort of uh, thing to go with the digital exchange problem, because in a way, what, we're, what we need to do is look at meta models of meta models. How do we create a meta model that spans the meta model of SysML, the meta model of MATLAB, the, the finite element models, et cetera. Um, so the DVM itself, those four areas of ontology are digital views, digital artifacts, stakeholders, and processes that all cover different areas within the concepts related to digital engineering information exchange. And the intention here is not to create a one-size-fits-all ontology of ontologies, but to create a framework that then can be extended by stakeholders for whatever domain that they're interested in or whatever their user stories are related to digital exchange that they need to they need to make happen for their their community. Here's a 10,000 foot view of the ontology of ontologies at the, the DVM at its uh, highest level. Um, I know this is an eye chart. I'm expecting you guys to read this. I'll in the subsequent slides, you'll see a little bit better detail of each of these four areas. But you can see the high level breakdown here of the four concept ontologies and then linkages between those ontologies where process concepts then tie into applications and repositories, authoritative sources of truth, and eventually, yes, digital artifacts that are the work products from the processes. Those digital artifacts then consumed and provided in terms of digital views that conform to a digital viewpoint that address a certain perspective that a stakeholder might have. So if I'm a, uh, a cybersecurity engineer, I'm, I've a, I practice software engineering as my discipline. I'm concerned about the uh, attack vectors and attack surfaces that come into play in my system design. Um, I might put all that information into a set of digital artifacts that drive a digital view for providing that information assurance assessment um, viewpoint, and then provide that information to you uh, if you're the acquisition authority who's then going to take that information and determine whether or not my system is going to meet the requirements uh, for cybersecurity. 
that kind of a scenario is exactly the sort of thing that we might extend the concepts in the DVM to address. And the goal is at some point to then have almost a catalog of digital views and viewpoints as starting points that the community can adopt and extend and provide their own extensions to, to support their specific needs. The digital artifact concepts, again, these are really describing the kinds of information that are being exchanged in your ecosystem. Digital artifacts are the, are the crux of this uh, exchange, but those digital artifacts themselves are made up of a series of digital information sources, one of which could be a digital system model, it could also be a MATLAB model or simulation of some kind, it could be a software design model, a hardware CAD model, whatever it might be. Digital view concepts are also then taking those digital artifacts and providing a means then to relate the digital views to where they're needed at a particular phase of the development life cycle. Um, we've actually started to adapt these notions of system phase and decision point a little bit to now um, relate more closely to the ENCOSI uh, 15288 lifecycle processes. So as you're creating digital views, to know what phase of the life cycle you're in, um, am I asking to view the interfaces when we're at a, at a level of maturity where we're just creating the functional architecture of our, of our system? say at a, a DOD uh, systems functional review, for example, or are we at a later phase of the development when we're getting closer to um, you know, critical design and we're getting close to establishing a, a, uh, you know, a technical readiness for going to manufacture and, and test and evaluation. At that point, I would expect to see more information in a view that's, uh, that's telling me information about the interfaces of the system. Process-wise, we're focused here on the work activities and work products that make use of these digital artifacts and digital views. Um, and again, these are meant to be extended. We see some, some sample extensions here where the work activities could be configuration control or some sort of an analysis that needs to be done. Um, we also see the tie-in to types of work products, whether that's creating a technical baseline that then has to be placed under configuration control or an analysis that yields some sort of analytical output. So these process concepts tie in with the digital artifacts that are then presented via those digital views and then ultimately consumed or produced by stakeholders. And we see here, there's just two very high level concepts related to stakeholders, an exchange provider and exchange receiver. And at one time we had acquirer and supplier and we realized that made it sound like it was only applicable to an acquisition kind of uh, sort of mindset where I'm developing a system, you're acquiring it, and, and, it's, a, and it's that kind of relationship that we have in maybe a DOD sense or, or in a commercial sales sense even. But we want to go beyond that. We want to think about providing and receiving digital information exchange, even inside of a team. Um, you know, if I'm the systems engineer, and my team needs to provide information to the mechanical design team. Um, how can we use this to help govern that kind of exchange? All right, this brings us to the digital engineering challenge. So the DEX challenge is something we uh, started last year. We're doing it again. And it's an opportunity really for us to kind of, uh, I'll say, you know, crowdsource the community. Uh, for input in where to take the uh, digital engineering information exchange working group in terms of essentially where are the pain points for the community? What sort of, of information ex exchange challenges do, you, do all of you see? Um, what are some of the, the concrete examples of where you'd like to be able to um, meaningfully you know, stitch together information in a semantically relevant way that then you would exchange with another party as part of your design activities. And the criteria for the submissions would be to put together some extensions to the concepts that we have in that, that digital viewpoint model and propose a, a couple of digital views that could be used for providing, consuming the information. Um, right now, we're actually, we've, we've even adapted this a little bit. We're actually working on just 
uh, getting um, user stories from the community. And our thought is then to, uh, at the Incozy International Workshop, um, take those user stories and, uh, and then begin to extend the DVM as teams. So we're actually at the Incozy International Workshop in January, we'll break out into groups, we'll take the user stories that have been submitted by the community, and we'll do some of these tasks that we're seeing here. Um, of course, if folks want to put together a full submission, we are more than happy to, to get that as well. But our real goal is just to try to crowdsource some information from folks. Again, we're looking at maybe two user scenarios for that data exchange. So perhaps a exchange of digital views early in the system development phase, maybe during a requirements analysis or, or early architecture uh, development. Maybe a second scenario further along when you're getting close to test readiness um, or, or you're getting to uh, you know, development of the, of the physical design itself, getting into a critical design stage. All right. As an example of, of the kinds of things that we're thinking of, um, let's say we are doing a design assessment, um, you know, during development stage. So uh, the development stage is as defined by ISO 15288. Um, and maybe I'm the customer and I need to review the, uh, the architecture of the in architecture performance metrics of the UAV system that's being developed because I want to understand its ability to maintain operations in the face of, let's say, a lightning strike um, as an environmental hazard. Um, you as the prime contractor, then maybe you're the safety and reliability engineer. You have to provide for me some sort of a, a resiliency assessment view. And we might use the DVM and its concepts to kind of conceptually outline what that resiliency assessment view should contain and how the data should be related and we would maybe put that into some sort of uh, contracting vehicle, or maybe it would be you know, something that we would uh, spec out during a technical interchange meeting so that you and I both are on the same page as to what the expectation is for the, for the exchanged information. And then I'm going to take that resiliency assessment view, and I'm going to assess the impacts on the UAVs, mechanical and electrical systems, including results of a finite or of a uh, failure modes effects analysis uh, that might be done in order to ensure compliance with related standards. So that view, perhaps maybe it's a 3D visualization, um, you know, maybe something like this genned up in, in the Unity uh, game engine framework with a CAD model in it, overlaid with SysML data, overlaid with finite element data, whatever it is, stores requirements, and the intent of this view then would be to give me that detailed, integrated digital view of all the properties and information about this. But it would have to relate a whole bunch of digital artifacts, um, system models, finite element, et cetera. So how do we trace a thread through all of those things and make sure that we can semantically relate all the information across those artifacts so that when some part of the system is affected by that external stimulus, like the lightning strike, I can understand the ripple effect across the entire design. And this is an example of how you might extend then the digital artifact concepts to try and eventually relate, say, a system function to something in your six DOF uh, flight analysis, uh, flight dynamics model, or your MATLAB model or the requirements here to the requirements or, or elements in your MCAD model. And then finally, the next steps, there's a number of uh, DexFOIC efforts going on. And uh, if anyone's interested in participating, um, again, thank you to Eric and Aaron for their, uh, their ongoing participation in the DexFOIC. Um, if you wanna get involved as well, uh, please send me an email, let me know, or you can visit our website and you'll see more information there. Uh, we've got a lot of great products that are already in development and that you can explore on that website. And again, the submissions for the DEX Challenge, we're accepting those right up until the Incozy International Workshop in January. And it's going to drive several activities, including the, uh, you know, the refinement of the DVM and the community submitted uh, exchange scenarios that we talked about earlier, but also creation of that catalog of digital views and viewpoints that all of you in the community can build upon. 
And eventually, we're also right now in talks with ISO for development of standards for digital engineering as well. All right, and thank you. That's all I have.